Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the final session of the Fleet LATAM conference. We have had an exciting day. It has given us a lot of information about internationalization and how it can benefit your fleet and mobility program across Latin America, especially on the topics of cost efficiency and total cost of ownership and on fuel management, safety, connectivity and mobility. Now it's time to put everything together and take a look at how all the elements we discussed today can fit together and lead to a bright future. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our executive panel with our conference founding partners ALD Automotive and Geotap. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you Eduardo Canicoba, AVP Business Development for Latin America at Geotap, the Global Telematics Specialist, and Alexander Valadao, Commercial Director at ALD Automotive Brazil, the well-known leasing company. Gentlemen, welcome, welcome to this panel. I hope that you are doing fine and we are immediately going to start because of course it will be interesting to see what your thoughts are about fleet and mobility management in Latin America. Talking about internationalization, because that has been a topic also throughout the day. Alexander, I would like to start with you on internationalization. Name one good reason why LATAM customers should consider a regional or more international fleet approach in Latin America. Okay, thank you very much for the, the invitation and starting from your first question. Uh, we should pay a, international, uh, the fleet managers should pay attention in the region because uh, because of um, we are in different level compared to other markets like Europe. We have some uh, transportation concerns and as a result, uh, we benefit from huge fleets, even in small countries. And uh, in some cases, uh, the fleet managers are not able to capt all of this information to work with. Uh, we have big countries like Brazil, uh, which is international size, or Mexico, uh, but fleets are everywhere and the markets are different. So uh, it's, uh, I see good opportunity uh, to consolidate this information together and start thinking about strategies. Mm -hmm. Eduardo, what other good reason do you see for fleet managers in Latin America to develop a regional program? Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. A pleasure to participate in a global fleet event uh, one more time. And I feel that today we are in a an international environment, we're in a global era, in a global world, where we do need, and we cannot lock ourselves into our own space, into our own ecosystem, into our own world or our own country or city. We need to see what is happening around the world. We know in Latin America that we are behind, perhaps in some technologies, if we compare versus Europe or the United States or Australia. However, however, there are always things that we can mimic or copy or try to copy or try to tropicalize to our world. So I feel that's why our fleet managers need to see what is happening always out of their city, out of their country and out of their continents because there's always something that can be, can be done. Just to give you an example, now programs about sustainability or electric vehicles. We know that Europe is maybe in the top of the list now, or the United States, or Canada, or Australia, but there are already happening things about electric vehicles in Latin America. And so they have to see what is happening with fleets that are already electric in other countries and copy the, the best practices in, in the region. So that's why that's important inter internationalization for the fleet managers. It's an interesting point that you make um, that best practices of other regions can be copied. Now, of course, it's not always as straightforward. So, Eduardo, what is the most common mistake or false assumption 
that fleet managers in Latin America have regarding internationalization in the region? Is there something that they do wrong? I think maybe not the word wrong, but uh, there is always an initial misconception. If I am in Latin America and I tell you, you know, I have a case of success I want to tell you that happened in Belgium or in Spain. They were like, oh, no, no, that doesn't apply to me because I want to hear a local success case, which makes sense. But if we go to the case of success, which, which talk about a fleet size of 20 cars, vehicles that are doing deliveries or installation of some internet services, they have drivers that need to perform their behavior and not speeding and not doing harsh acceleration. So that can be done applicable to any country in the world. You need a driver that performs well, and you have a fleet of 20 cars that is providing some specific service. So the first conception is saying a, a, a complete no to what it comes to some international example, because there are some things that can be, that can be copied. Of course, of course, um, you cannot bring an example about I don't know, maybe how good, how the roads are uh, repaired in Europe. Because we, we know, for example, that programs like that in Latin America maybe will never happen, like having a, an automatic pro, uh, program to repair, to repair uh, roads. But there are cases that can, that can be applicable, and that is where the fleet managers need to, need to open. And maybe it's something Brazil copying from Mexico or Mexico copying from Brazil. There are things that do not apply, but there are orders that definitely can be replicated. And that's a behavior that might be changed in some cases. Alexander, I would like to continue with you. How easy is it to regionalize fleet and leasing across Latin America? Is the market already uh, mature enough? Uh, the market is under uh, maturity in different steps, uh, but it's moving on. Uh, I think the, the, main, uh, the main challenge here uh, for, uh, for a consolidation is uh, the fleet manager should, uh, should understand what it's possible and, not, and what it's not possible to harmonize in terms of fleet, because the, the countries are different. Mm -hmm. uh, they are in different maturity. Uh, OEM's uh, relation is different. If you compare Brazil and Chile or Colombia or Mexico, uh, and you cannot do everything at the same time. You need to, to understand what you can apply commonly for the countries and what you should respect uh, on a specific uh, in, on a specific market, but uh, the countries here are um, we ha we still have low penetration in terms of uh, full service compared to other matured markets, and when we are moving, uh, this is uh, this is good. We we are moving. International customers are asking for are learning more and more. National companies as well. Uh, everybody's understanding is better understanding the concepts of a full service leasing or fleet management and we are moving it's good uh, nothing mm. compared to 10 years ago for example it's completely okay. different it's nice to hear and what would be your advice alexander to those fleet managers who have some problems selling the international approach internally sometimes you hear that that it's not so easy internally with the stakeholders to sell that international approach what would be your advice to them uh, the advice is um, again it's to understand the local markets the local practice the concerns and what can be uh, put together what cannot be put together uh, Look at the car policies. Uh, it, it's very common uh, when we go to a customer, the car policy they have in Brazil or the funding method is not the same they have in other country. So really be open mind to understand, to evaluate the information and then 
to move on the next step, which is to work on the harmonization and 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 next uh, actions. In fact. Okay, and I would like to continue with you, Eduardo. Um, which aspects of fleet management can and should be internationalized? Alexander already talked about funding, for example, but perhaps also OEM selection or powertrain selection or fuel strategy, safety, connectivity could be regionalized. What is the easiest, in your opinion, to start with? I think something really important that we need to uh, the message to everyone is the concept of data the importance of data and the importance of analyzing the data because what i'm referring about is you as a fleet manager you are really concerned about the productivity of your drivers or the security of your drivers or the, the total cost of ownership of your fleet or predictive maintenance, or the fuel consumption, or the fuel stealing, uh, or you are concerned about the, the co coach your driver to do it better, to reduce accidents, to perhaps reduce injuries to people in the streets or injuries to themselves. You are concerned about migrating to a to a to an electric vehicle because you want to be more sustainable and reduce the carbon footprint. So the importance of analyzing the data is what takes you to analyze all these different aspects that apply to every single fleet. It can be a light vehicle, a mid vehicle, a heavy vehicle. The importance of data going beyond, okay, I want to track I, with a GPS, mm -hmm. a vehicle from point A to point B. And with, with that, I have the necessary information I need to manage my fleet because you need more. And at the end, there is an impact in different aspects, economic, about the, um, how good your drivers perform, how happy your people working for you, how you comply with regulations in your country. So the data, it's really important where, where our fleet managers need to go to see the importance of the data and the return of the investment on that. Okay. Uh, Alexander, I see you nodding yes. So you do agree that the importance of data is crucial in terms of planning your strategy and what can be done regionally and what should be left locally. Yes, I fully agree. Uh, data is really important. Uh, today, um, our, our kind of activity, we can produce a lot of data. Uh, not only uh, in terms of costs, but also driver behavior. Uh, and more importantly, um, is not only producing data. The more important is what you do after you see what's going on with your, your fleet. Uh, I think this is, uh, this is something that uh, uh, it's moving on in the region, uh, for sure. Uh, we uh, we are uh, really focused on producing more uh, common reports, even understanding the particularity of each each country, uh, because at the end of the day, uh, the impact of for a company is what they produce on a local level. Uh, what happens in the region is what they they provide in terms of action, in terms of uh, uh, decisions in terms of change, sometimes in a car policy, and the result at the end at the end is for is aiming for regional uh, for, for for the region, not only for the one specific country to to the other. I fully agree with uh, with the comments. Perfect. Now, gentlemen, let's take a look at the growth opportunities in the region. Okay. I um, would like to start with Eduardo here. Do you expect growth for your business across Latin America this year already? We know that we are still living in a particular situation. Slowly and surely it will go better, we hope. Um, but do you expect already growth for your business this year across Latin America? Oh yeah, absolutely. Indeed, indeed. Uh, thankfully, this year we have had a growth in the region when it comes to amount of subscribers uh, to our to our base, and this is why you know Latin America is 
really a particular region always because somehow we are adapted to living in eternal crises. Our countries, we, if we recall our early years, yeah, Alexander is going to agree with me, we always have lived crises, different kinds of crises, economicals, economical ones always. So the region has adapted. And on top of that, transportation is really important to our region because we don't have really good or important uh, rail transportation methods. So we need to rely on cars for last mile or in trucks for delivering uh, medicines, food, uh, goods, supply, supply things, et cetera, to around the country. So we have seen a growth this year, even with COVID, and for sure we foresee a growth, a growth for the next year in, in, in Latin America. And also, for course, now, and now, of course, including Brazil, you know, which is a, a really, really important market for us, and we're, we're indeed where we are getting a really hard. Now we are opening an operation in Brazil, uh, which Yotav is going to be present. So we expect even to have even more growth now, including Brazil in our plans in, in, in the region. Okay. Uh, Alexander, is it the same for you and for ALD? ALD is present in many countries across Latin America. You already mentioned that perhaps the full-service leasing product is not yet implemented as it is, for example, in Europe. But do you also see growth in your business? Yes, uh, for sure there is an impact of the COVID. But the business uh, is showing to be very resilient mm -hmm. uh, because uh, during this, I think the region uh, brings us an opportunity different from stable markets because we are always in uh, ups and downs, <laughs> not only COVID, but economy. And uh, we, we need to, to, to find alternatives, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to, to keep growing. And... And AOD today is much more a full service leasing company. We are a mobility company. So if I cannot deliver a vehicle now, I can deliver a mobility card. If I cannot, if, if we need to wait for a vehicle from an OEM, I can buy the customer fleet and, and do the sales and lease back, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and and then we can we can do flex. We 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 avoid selling our vehicles, and then we keep again to the customer. We can do a flex. We can do a second lease. Uh, so uh, it's challenging, but uh, resilient. And uh, and sure, we we are growing. We could grow much more. This is my my point of view. But. Uh, but uh, considering the, 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 the situation, uh, for sure, uh, we, we, are, we are doing very well in the region. Okay, It's great to see that both of you see big growth opportunities. Um, another topic that I would like to uh, mention uh, to you, and I would like to start with Eduardo. Eduardo, can we also expect a further consolidation of the LATAM fleet market? If you look into the industry, do you think that industry players will be acquired by others, that there is somehow a consolidation across Latin America? Yeah, in, in regards of growth of uh, fleet managers using better technologies to manage their fleets, I definitely agree. As Alexander was saying before, the, we are still maybe in earlier steps, if I compare with other regions, but every time we see more and more companies, either small, medium, or large enterprises, looking for solutions on how to improve the efficiency of their fleets, how to implement technology to better manage their fleets, and how to, at the end of the day, optimize their, their costs, optimize their um, fuel, uh, fuel expenses, optimize the way the drivers drive, uh, or the driver. They are looking for methods to do better. So this is a trend that I see in Latin America now growing more and more every day. And if I compare with the United States, for example, where we have a, a very big base of users, I begin seeing some behaviors in our region which compare what is happening, talk about internationalization, what is happening in the United States, for example. And also, I see that as a trend, companies looking for more technologies. When it comes to companies acquiring others or doing um, some big, happening some merges, I couldn't comment on that. But I am not aware of any of that uh, as of today, but definitely I see the market growing for sure in, in Latin America when it comes to fleet management and, and the way that apply technology. 
Very good. Uh, Alexander, what kind of trends, which trends will drive the development of fleet and mobility management across Latin America? Can you name a few? Yes, yes, I, I can name some of them. Eduardo talked a little bit about uh, electrification. Uh, for me, it's a really hot topic and something that uh, we should push as an industry, for sure, because uh, in, in, in order to find the right balance, um, there are some countries like Mexico and Colombia, which are a little bit more advanced, advanced compared to Brazil, for example. But it's something that definitely the demand is coming from international customers who are mm -hmm. seeking for sustainable solutions, for sure. Uh, we are now involved in a number of projects with uh, local international companies talking about talking to the ecosystem to see how we can develop these, uh, these projects, uh, how we can accelerate this so we, we trust a lot. Uh, sharing and mo mobility, I also trust that that is a, a, a big trend, mm -hmm. especially in, uh, in big cities like Sao Paulo, Bogota, uh, Mexico City, Lima, uh, where we see that the, the traffic jam is not well uh, organized and we should do something uh, to, to, how can I say, to smooth and, and, and to give more opportunities for the customer, as, for, for the companies as well. Mobility can bring uh, the possibility not only for the elected drivers, uh, the drivers who are in the policy, but uh, for all of the employees, uh, and this is something that we started developing in the region, and we really, we we really trust it's a it's a big trend. Mm -hmm. Okay, and to continue with you, Alexander, on the topic of sustainability, uh, is a green fleet program feasible and practical already today across Latin America? Is it already now the time for fleet managers to start developing a green car policy? Uh, we we think that it's something that we should build together. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not consolidated, as I told you. Uh, uh, when we speak, at least uh, in Brazil, uh, we discover things daily basis. <laughs> you know, sometimes we think that we don't have uh, possibilities, and then we started talking to the ecosystem. We see some possibilities and opportunities. Uh, something, as I told before, uh, it's not ready there. It's not ready there. The government, at least here in Brazil, is not putting money and say, okay, uh, our targets will be, I don't know, how, uh, 20, 25% of electric vehicles in 10 years, like we see in, in some other countries. So, uh, but the good point is everybody is trying to make uh, the, the possibilities uh, feasible, and we are working to, to make it happen. We have some uh, already some projects in place, implemented mm -hmm. here. Uh, uh, we have a very interest, interesting one that it's not only electric vehicle, but uh, plug it in a car sharing platform, okay, with a very big uh, Spanish company here. Uh, with very good results, not only in terms of sustainability, but also in terms of cost and customer and driver experience as well. And this is the way we want to, to do. We don't want to wait all of the infrastructure and all of the conditions to start offering something. Uh, and, and, and for sure, I, I believe that in 10 years, we will be much, uh, much more advanced for, for, for compared to now. Mm, okay. Um, Eduardo, and what about the uptake of uh, telematics and, and connectivity? I assume that, for example, for reasons of safety and driver behavior, your technology and your services can be very useful. But um, do you see this also as a trend with more and more fleets in the region and perhaps not only uh, for vans and for trucks, but also for passenger cars? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If I, if I have to talk about trends that I see in the region, for example, the amount of last mile vehicles 
either light vehicles or heavy vehicles is increasing a lot. The COVID has helped on that definitely because um, people need to send an, a box. You need to send a box. You need to buy something online. And also companies need to deliver food or medicines to other cities to take into the border. So a lot of last mile services have been implemented. Definitely the business of, well, and not because Alexander is here, uh, renting or leasing cars to other companies. People is thinking more and more and in the leasing industry, having a vehicle that is leased and used for their companies rather than acquiring a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Electric vehicles definitely for me is another trend because it's a matter of, for me, a public health. Sustainability is a matter of public health. The society needs to think about this as of today, not tomorrow, not after tomorrow. Today, because at the end, we all need to breathe. So I agree with Alexander 100%. We need the, the government involved on this in terms of they also pushing and supporting the migration to more sustainable fleets and more sustainable models of transportation. So those are the, the trends that I that, that that I see that I see in the region, yeah. and all of them when it comes to our technology, our technology can support all the cases. Our technology is not built only for one specific case of fleet or kind of fleet or kind of vertical. Our technology is built for every kind of vehicle and every kind of ver uh, vertical, because we follow different kinds of pillars that apply to every single car. No matter if you're talking about, you're looking for optimization, you're looking for sustainability, you're looking for security, you're looking uh, for optimization. Our technology is made to that, and in particular for EVs, for electric vehicles, we have a very robust platform, mm -hmm. the best platform now in the world when it comes to telematics, to, to manage uh, electric vehicles and non-electric vehicles. No? Okay, very good. So the future is bright. Uh, happy to hear that. Gentlemen, we should add, end this panel discussion, of course, with some tips and some advice. So uh, for both of you, and I would like to start with Eduardo, uh, what is the key ingredient for a fleet management recipe to succeed in Latin America? I think the, the key ingredient is, first of all, Believe is what I said before, maybe, but believing in the importance of data. Fleet managers or uh, fleet owners need to understand that they need data to better manage their fleets and the impact on that, economically speaking, in secure, uh, security wise, as we were speaking when it comes to sustainability. So the importance of understanding the data. And fleet managers understanding they, they, how, how many important decisions they can take because of the data. Mm -hmm. I think that's like the, the key on this. If fleet managers jump or go away of that concession, conception of, okay, as long as I need where I know where is my car from point A to point B, I don't need anything else. The key is no, understanding the value of getting rich data from your vehicles and building analytics on top of that to take important business decisions. That's, in my opinion, the most important now. Okay, and you can help them with them, so that's great. Alexander, the same question for you. What is your main advice? Yes, yes uh, I fully agree with his comments and I like to, to complement, keep in mind, uh, again, the particularity. It's a big region but formed by different countries, different language, different aspects, different level of maturity. And these must be keep in mind when making the necessary actions for sure, uh, because this is uh, really crucial to find the, high, the, the right balance of harmonization for, uh, for sure, uh, uh, in order to implement uh, the right decisions in terms of uh, fleet policy, costs, uh, and, and, and anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my final, my final advice. Okay, good. So uh, think global, act local, and find the right balance. And do that based on insights that you gather from data. That is one of the main conclusions, I think, of this panel discussion. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. It was great having this discussion. We need to close the panel here, but don't leave the conference yet.
Um, ladies and gentlemen, from all that we've seen and heard today, it has become clear that an international approach is the pathway to success and efficiency across Latin America, but you need to keep the balance right. It's great to see that the industry is embracing various trends that will make your fleet and mobility journey less bumpy. And now it's time for you and your company to implement the lessons learned during this conference. And the good news is that this fourth edition of the Fleet LATAM conference is not over yet. Stay with us a bit longer because this year will end the conference with a bang. In just a few minutes time, you will know the name of the first Fleet LATAM manager of the year.